Hello, everyone. Hi. I'm so, thank you for being here, and thank you for this warm celebration of Pat's work. Um, I think a lot of you know me for this film called The Watermelon Woman that turned, thank you, that turned 20 this year. And um, I know, right? Okay. So it's a, a magical year. I just, uh, I, I'm a young one. Well, we know black don't crack. That's all we have to say. She, she right. deserves a whole lot more of the introduction than I do, but I'm still kind of out on Jonestown, so forgive me. Mm, no. Give her a big hand for the work she's done. Thank you. So, yeah, I, I, you know, in making The Watermelon Woman, I think it was so important for me to include my community and find my community. And I, you know, I came, I was always out. I was never in. Um, some people could say that. I'm one of those gold star individuals. <laughs> Remember the gold stars, right? Gold stars in the house, right? It's like, phew. Um, but uh, in that discovery as a young person, um, I went to the library and I went to look for books and I went to look for people and I went to look for my identity and I went to try to find myself and you know stumbled into Pat's work and Pat's somebody who is not up there in the picture but I was like uh oh this this can be me in the kingdom of could be me this is it right so I was really blessed to see somebody who looked like me and have the courage to make work and I think that's the most important thing about words I turned them into images. So the words of Pat, the words of Audrey, the words of Jewel, the words of so many other people, Marlon, Essex, I mean, I could just continue on, the people who made me percolate and boil. Um, but I wanted to like bring down what I felt Pat's work was about, or what I was reading again and again, um, was about a couple of points, and that's why I picked four works. I think it's about spirit. I think Pat's work is about courage, um, anger, I mean, we're angry, right? And then love, and I think we always forget about the love part. So I'm gonna read some poems that I think uh, from Pat's work that really kind of touch on that for me. I guess I'll start with anger, because we are at that moment right now with, <laughs> with being hella angry and, you know, what can we do about that but work and turn our anger into something. And as we approach Thanksgiving, um, Pat's poem, One Thanksgiving Day, is something that really, mm-hmm. Mm Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you're going to do that. Mm -hmm. One Thanksgiving day, Priscilla Ford got into her Lincoln Continental, drove to Virginia Street in downtown Reno, and ran over 30 people. Six of them died. One Thanksgiving day, Patricia Ford got into her Lincoln Continental, drove to Virginia Street in downtown Reno, and ran over 30 people. Six of them died. Priscilla, Priscilla, who did you see? What face from your past? Was it the waitress who waited to wait on you? Was it the clerk who tried to sell you only the brightest colored clothes? Was it your child's teacher who tried to teach her that she was slow? Was it the security guard at the bank who guarded you from the bank's money with his eyes? On Thanksgiving Day, Priscilla Ford got into her Lincoln Continental, drove to Virginia Street in downtown Reno, and ran over 30 people. Yes, Six did. of them died. Screams filled the street. Panic ran through the crowd like a losing streak at the blackjack tables, and the state of Nevada was stunned. A tired, middle-aged black woman was not thankful that day, not thankful for her job racking gifts at Macy's, not thankful for the state taking custody of her child. She was not thankful for her Lincoln Continental. Priscilla Ford got into her Lincoln Continental and hurled through the streets of Reno, the killer made in Motown factories, swept down on tourists looking to make a big hit, hit by a navy blue steel bl bludgeon, screams dying beneath its wheels, and the state of Nevada was angry. She went to trial, insanity, her lawyers pled, she was crazy with anger. She was crazy with fear. She was crazy with defeat. She was crazy with isolation. No sane person kills strangers with their cars. Priscilla Ford said, yes, I drove my car into the whiteness of Nevada streets. She would say nothing more, and the state of Nevada was frightened. If Priscilla Ford could do it, who else? How many black faces that employed emptied garbage, waited tables, bagged groceries, wrapped presents were capable? 
reaction was swift. One entrepreneur printed a card. It said, Happy Thanksgiving, with a, a picture of Priscilla Ford on its front. Inside it said, Sorry I missed you. <laughs> Priscilla Ford got into her Lincoln Continental, drove down Virginia Street in downtown Reno, and ran over 30 people. Six of them died. And the state of Nevada was vindicated. You cannot be insane to be enraged. It's not insane to be filled with hatred. It's not insane to lash out at whiteness. It's not insane. It is being a nigger. It is your place in life. Priscilla Ford got into her Lincoln Continental, drove to Virginia Street in downtown Reno, and ran over 30 people. Six of them died. And now Priscilla Ford will die. The state of Nevada has judged that it is not crazy for black folks to kill white people with their cars. Priscilla Ford will be the second woman executed in Nevada's history. It's her highest finish in life. That's true. That's true. All right. So I guess that's the anger um, that I talked about. You know, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Don't get me in a Lincoln Continental. Watch out. Drive through Palo Alto, self-driving car. Take that wheel. So let me move on to love. And I've been traveling a lot with the watermelon woman. I just actually flew in from the one archive, which is a lovely, lovely place. We we need to all give our stuff to archives. We have one here, but the one archive in LA, just wonderful. So they had some stuff about the watermelon woman up, and I was there. So I'm going to read words. Riding from the airport, she says, "My partner," I say my lover. Neither word seems right. Partner brings pictures of offices and desks, going to bank, having policy meetings. Lover brings images of sweating bodies and touch sheet smells of sex. Wife? No, that brings pictures of husbands and a wife. I'll never be a significant other. But that's not enough. When I opened my eyes after surgery and saw your face, you were not an other. When you bathed me because I could not raise my arm above shoulder, you were not an other. When you told me I was beautiful and desirable, you were not an other. When you held me as I talked of death and the world still undone, you were not an other. You were my one true love, my one, my significant one. So. We have, we have to think about love in these times and turn to the other and just, yeah, yeah. So um, courage, uh, I'm, I'm like falling apart myself, so it's, it's really, I'm like shaking, watch out. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna continue on and, and I wanna do um, more about love. Um, and the complications in love, um, I think the film The Watermelon Woman does portray an interracial couple and their you know, path in life and, and it was part of the narrative so it, it didn't work out, you know, these narratives don't work out for film. But um, I wanted to talk about the contradictions in, in life and love and A Woman's Love is a one that talks about the heart. Um, a Woman's Love, I have sat in a lonely room cluttered with words of other voices making wallpaper figures dance, dance for me like gestures before a queen's court. I have lain in our bed while you, love, made word pictures for others' eyes. I have listened at your keys clicked, snapped to your orders like scarred soldiers in your private war. I have hated your words, the thousands of words, words in a citadel I can never share. I have hated your words more than any woman yet loved your words because they're, they're your words. So, Give her yeah. a big hand. All right. And this woman has done 15 films at least, so check them all out mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Do you have a website where they can get you? Yes, CherylDunier.com. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, and I wanted to, again, end on... You know, I'm a little wacky, I think people know that. Um, but I wanted to do a fun, wacky poem about love and short and sweet and just fun. And it's I come quite you, because someone said to say, I love you 
is corny. Thank you.